Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary with the Get Some Podcast. And my guest this week is... <laughs> this motherfucking Gary. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary on with the Get Some Podcast. Uh, we're going to start with my schedule, like always. This week, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Pittsburgh Improv. Uh, just found out right before we record it. Just added a 930 show Sunday. And, uh, yeah, because all the other ones are sold out. So if you want to come see me, I think we're going to add one Saturday. Hasn't been done yet, but pretty sure we are. But, uh, yeah, everything's sold out. So, we had it one Sunday at 9.30, and looks like we're going to add a – hopefully we'll add another one Saturday. And then the week that, – that's this weekend. And then next week I am in Washington, D.C., uh, September 21st to 24th at the Improv. We've added three shows there because the first six sold out. So we've added one Friday, one Saturday, one Sunday, an extra show. And then I'm in Richmond, Virginia, the 29th and 30th, Friday, Saturday. we got five shows on sale. Those are moving pretty good. That's going to take me to the end of September. Then the first week, October 7th, I'm in Palm Springs, California at the Morongo Casino. So, uh, and then I hit Cleveland, Ohio, the House of Horrors for the Cincinnati Bengals, October 12th through the 15th. Uh, last week, I was in Buffalo. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. I ain't going to lie. Not going to be one of these comics. Like, oh, it was packed, sold out. We did good. We did really good. But, man, tickets was slow up until three days before I got there. I was a little worried. I was like, what, what is going on in Buffalo? Why aren't tickets moving? And then they just they took off. But I ain't going to lie. I was calling my agent like, I, ugh, so I'm not fond of the Northeast because for some reason, I don't know why my comedy doesn't vibe there for whatever reason as far as I'm not there a lot. Tickets don't move like the other 90% of the country. I don't know what it is about me in the Northeast, but I don't know. But at least Buffalo came through in the end. Uh, and speaking of Cleveland and Buffalo, uh, it's interesting. So I'm in Buffalo. They're geeked for the season, football season start. Ain't nothing like week one, the NFL season. They were geeks for the Jets and Bills game. And God, when Aaron Rodgers went down Monday night, I when he came out with that American flag and ran up and did a little handshake with Sauce Gardner, I was like, oh, snap. I go, ooh, it's going to be good. I was geeked. I'm a Bengals fan, but I was geeked. And then four plays. It was just over. And, I mean, God, you got to feel for Jets fans. They never can catch a break. And I think this is like Rodgers going to Rogers going to the Jets at this stage of his career. Would is 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 he's not as dominant as a LeBron in basketball, but it's very similar to like a a LeBron type player going to the Knicks when he's still got a couple good years left. Uh that that's it. That, that's what it felt like. Just feel like an iconic person coming uh, to that team. And, oh, man. And then you see the Jets play, and they got a squad, man. They got a defense. They got wide receivers. They got the – Brees Hall was running, like, before he tore his ACL. They, you know, the line is not that great. But, man, they they got a team, boy. Oh, I feel bad for them. Uh, so, anyways, I'm in Buffalo. And I see I'm wearing Bengal stuff again. Because you don't abandon ship on your squad off of one bad week. So, Cleveland, you soak it up. We'll take the L. We'll take all the memes. We'll take all the abuse online. That's fine because we played like shit. From top to bottom, just the defense did good, but it's just it's one, of them, one of them things, man. We just were flat. The rain didn't help. That's not an excuse because Cleveland played in the rain too, but – I think when you got someone like Burrow, who clearly is not 100%, uh, and when I mean 100%, I just don't mean the calf. I mean the timing, reading the defense, everything. It's just 
game time, didn't get the reps. He's just not 100% right now, like totally. But one thing we know about Joe Burrow, he figures it out. And the team follows suit accordingly. <clears throat> but I'm in I'm in Buffalo. I order the and I'm order the NFL package off YouTube and I, I I'm pumped, man. I got on my laptop, got on my phone, I'm ready to go. And I went, oh, wait a minute. I checked the television and looks like Cleveland and Cincinnati is the game of the week in Buffalo. And I was like, oh, I don't even need the NFL package this week. I'm good. And plus when the the way it works is like whatever city you're in, whatever the game of the week is on TV, the local game, you can't get that on on your app. You can't get on YouTube TV. So I couldn't even get the Cleveland Cincinnati game anyways. <laughs> it's 1245. I'm in my room. I got shorts on. I went and got food to go. I don't like to be bothered. Like I said, I like to yell at the TV. Uh, all of a sudden, my hotel doesn't have CBS. What hotel doesn't have CBS? Something was going to Buffalo where like Disney or ESPN or something. Spectrum, I don't know. One of these providers were not allowing CBS uh, in the hotels for some reason or in the area, which is going to be crazy when Buffalo has home games like that. But uh, so I'm calling the front desk. I'm cussing. I'm freaking out. So I can't get it on my app. I can't get it on my TV. So I'm scrambling. I throw on sweats, a T-shirt, flip-flops. None of it matches a hat. I had like black sweats, blue shirt. Tam flip flops, uh, black hat. It, 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 none of it matched. I'm scrambling, so I'm running down the street. I run into this Italian restaurant. I walk in, it's just before kickoff. It's brown. Nobody's in this restaurant. It's Browns and being like, thank God. So I sit down. Bartender starts talking to me. He goes, he goes, you uh, Cleveland or Cincinnati? I go Cincinnati. He goes, oh man, I'm rooting for Cleveland. I was like, so, so me and him are the only two in this restaurant watching the game, and. He's being extra polite and I'm being extra polite because you don't want to be the asshole at the bar and when it's only two of you. And so it got to a point we were just kept complimenting each other's team so good. I was like, oh, Nick Chubb, he's so good. Man, Miles Garrett, he's really good. I kept saying it to him. And then that was a good run. And then he'd go, oh, Jamar Chase, man, that guy's a stud. And Burrow figured it out. And this rain's messing us up. And we were so polite. By the end of the game, I left having to hit the fourth quarter. I just couldn't take it anymore. And then uh, I just went, man, I kind of wish he was an asshole because we were just so nice this whole game. I didn't really get to enjoy. I didn't get really get to like get mad at Cleveland or get <laughs> or be excited about my team. There was nothing to be excited about, really. But he says, man, I felt the same way. I felt the same way. Neither of us could really go in on each other. <laughs> so it's just kind of like it is what it is. Anyways, that's in the past. We are on to Baltimore. Uh, did win my fantasy week one, so there's a silver lining with all that. Okay. Uh, anyways, so with the football motif, I'm always looking for stuff to download on um, on my phone and, and, and my laptop so when I'm flying I could watch something. So I went to HBO Max, and I look across this BS high school. And it stood for Bishop Sycamore. It's funny. It's BS bullshit. Bishop Sycamore High School in Columbus, Ohio. And the coach and the founder of this fake program, his name was Roy Johnson. I watched this and I was so taken back. And I was so like, how could this happen? Uh, I'd never seen a more disgusting individual. Uh, outside of like any kind of... Uh, sexual assaults that happened and things like that. But just as a coach, uh, what he did to those kids at that program, I was like, I couldn't believe it. If you, if you get a chance, watch BS High on HBO Max. And basically what it is is this guy, Roy Johnson, he starts this fake uh, high school program, kind of like IMG Academy. And he <laughs> He goes to this church. He starts this fake high school, Bishop Sycamore. The guys don't go to class. He's just scamming everybody. He's taking out PPP loans in these in these players' names. Some of the players are like 19, 20 years old. They don't have any eligibility left. And he's got them playing high school football. 
and everything got exposed when, and I remember this game, it was on ESPN, they were playing IMG Academy, and they got mopped. It was, it was like, it looked, it didn't look like varsity playing JV. It looked like a varsity team just playing a bunch of guys that they just picked them off, off out of the parking lot and said, hey, put this equipment on. And he just, he's such a liar. And I think people throw around narcissist a little too much. I know I got called a narcissist in my divorce. Uh, I think that's always the go-to. But he is what you call a narcissist. Because he kept, he he got these boys to buy in. And he go to their homes. Their moms would send them away. It was kind of like uh, at these sports academy schools like Oak Hill in Virginia and IMG. A lot of these, a lot of the players are coming in from different parts of the country. And it basically, your job is, is yeah, it's to go to class and be eligible. That's that's your only goal. Your, your whole focus is to get to the next level to play college sports. And... He takes these boys on such a ride saying, hey, I, I can get you D1. Well, if Cods Coast is looking at you, he was renting out these facilities. He put the boys at hotels or these apartment buildings, and then he'd write fake checks off fake accounts, and they would kick them out, and he would just move them to a different hotel, move them to a different apartment complex. And he just had a run of back, uh, bounce checks, run of bills at these, these hotels, restaurants, uh, apartment buildings, and just took these boys on a ride, taking out loans in their name. And then uh, even like when he's called on, he, he, call, he literally calls himself an honest liar and loophole, loophole Leroy is what he calls himself. And some of the stuff he just did, like he took these boys on such a ride and some of them ain't got no eligibility left. Uh, and it was all, all it was, was to, I don't know what his grand scheme, what his goal was, but I think it was just, he just wanted to get as much money and he wants to be famous clearly. And he, he, he ate this documentary up as bad as it made him look as an individual. He ate it up. He was loving that he was going to be on TV, probably loving that people were talking about on a podcast, but I was just like. Oh my God. I couldn't believe the lengths that he went to. And then Bamani Jones is on it. And he's such a man, he was such a everything you're thinking about, Bamani Jones has a way of saying. And he said, I didn't realize this till I was watching it. He goes, he didn't just go after kids, he went after black kids because he knew people wouldn't care as much or would not care as much, wouldn't question as much. Like you do a bunch of white kids are doing this, people are gonna start asking more questions. So he's like, and Roy Jones is a black dude. So he's doing it to his own people, so to speak, just taking them for a ride. And he really messed some of these kids up in the head as far as trusting adult figures, because you're talking about a, uh, as a grown man that didn't have a positive male role model, the coaches are that when you're growing up. And the fact that your coach is taking you for a ride and messing up your credit. There was one incident they said the coach was, um, he ran out. There was like some geese in the road and he ran over one of the geese and then backed up, ran over again and made the players look at him. It was like, yeah, I love the smell of blood in the morning. And I, this is what you guys got to do this. We got to go to war. This was like going to war. And I was like, what is he talking about? And then they said there was a guy, a homeless guy, like around his car and he beat the homeless guy up with a belt and told him that guy never had any discipline growing up. So I had to beat him. He's doing this in front of his, his players. And then one player lived with them for a little bit and saw him, like, put hands on his girlfriend, cussing her out. And every time something would happen, Roy would get in the car with these, this player and be like, you see what she made me do? She's always pushing me, making me do stuff. So it's always somebody else's fault with this guy. But if you get a chance, watch it. I was like, I didn't want it to end. I was like, oh. And then the fact that it happened in Ohio, and I remember watching that game on ESPN, and I was like, how did this happen? And he thought that game was going to make him famous. That game is what got people looking into. And it's so funny. He named the school Bishop Sycamore. So the initials are BS. I was like, it was almost like he winked, wink. Like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. But it was just, ugh, it was ugly. So if you get a chance to watch it, watch it. 
Now, on the other side of things, so you got this Bishop Sycamore on HBO Max I watched, BS High. On the other side of that, you got a coach. Where I say coaches are important in men's lives, what Deion Sanders is doing in Colorado, oh, my God. 2-0, and about to play Colorado State. That should be a win. Then they got to go to Oregon and USC. Can you imagine they're undefeated when they play USC? And Deion gets so much hate from these old school announcers and everything, and they say he's arrogant. They say uh, it's all about Dion. Well, you clearly don't know Deion Sanders. You clearly don't know the message that he's sending. Uh, it Here's the thing about chain of command, coaching in general. Like, shit rolls downhill. So you're going to – you're gonna in success, you're going to get – you're going to get the praise, but in failure, you're going to get the blame. So Dion's taking that on. So, yeah, he's successful right now. So he should be getting the accolades. And I guarantee you if they were 0-2 – He'd be taking all the the bullets and arrows coming his way, too. If you don't know, listen, I've known Dion for 18 years, 19 years, consistently the same guy. And I'll I'll tell you a story about Dion. This is all I got on about Dion Sanders. I was in New York City, and this is when Dion retired the first time. He retired, and then he came back and played for the Ravens for a year or two. But he was with one of the networks, I think CBS, that year. And, uh, I wasn't even performing at Caroline's. I was just there for some reason. And I, I whoever I was seeing, it doesn't matter. But Dion came to that show, and he came with another player. And I'm not going to throw any other players under the bus because the other player wasn't being a dick. But if you look at how these two players were portrayed in the media, Dion's arrogant. Dion thinks he's better than people. It's all about Dion. This other player is good family man. Uh, he's a white dude. Uh, you know, they they just love him. Got a lot of endorsements. I saw these two come backstage in Caroline's through the kitchen to go take their seats. When I tell you Dion stopped, shook every cook's hand, took pictures, seemed very personable. How you doing? The staff and the other guy just went to a seat. Poof, didn't want to be bothered. And it doesn't mean the other guy's a bad dude. That's why I'm not going to say his name and call him out. Doesn't mean that other X player is a bad dude. It just meant he didn't want to be bothered and he went. But Dion, being Dion, he just was, I don't know, he's just that guy. Now, I don't want to say like uh, there are times that people don't want to be bothered because I'll give you another funny Dion story. So I saw that one. That was the first time I had ever seen Dion in person, but I didn't know him. And then I got to know him. So I'm out to dinner. Uh, 2006 or something like that in uh in Cincinnati the the Ravens came in town to play the Bengals and I took a bunch of the Ravens out to eat and and I might have told this story before but it fits cuz what Dion's doing right now but take these guys out to eat we sit down there's probably about 10 Baltimore Ravens at this at this uh restaurant called uh the Montgomery and Boathouse in Cincinnati great rib place if you ever in Cincinnati but we sit down, and this guy comes over and just completely interrupts dinner is what he does. But he goes directly towards Dion. He goes, Dion, baby. He goes, hey, I always told my mother if I ever saw you, I, I have to take a picture. I have to take a picture. And Dion went, brother, I appreciate you. I appreciate your mom liking me. He goes, but I got one rule, man. I do not take pictures or sign autographs while I'm eating dinner. I just don't do that while I'm eating dinner. And the guy, him, Dion was like, but I do appreciate you. And the guy was like, that's real. That's real. And disappeared. One of the guys looks at Dion and goes, hey, man, why ain't you take a picture with that dude? Dion goes, that mug feels good about not getting a picture right now. <laughs> I was like, so he wasn't rude. He acknowledged the guy. I pre said I appreciate you. He was just like, I don't take pictures or sign autographs while I'm eating dinner, which is valid. You shouldn't interrupt people when they're eating dinner. But uh, but just the way he did it was so Dion. Dion listen, Dion, what he's doing in Colorado, I wish I had eligibility left. I wish I had a son in high school right now. I'd be like, I'd be calling Dion myself. Can he come to Colorado? He's made Boulder in in two games. He's made it the place to be. And and where else you want to go see a game right now? If you're going to ask me, Gary, you're off this Saturday. Who you want to go see play? Colorado. And I bet you 90% of people want to go. Either it's because they hate them or they love them. But TV ratings are skyrocketing. 
I guarantee you, Dion ain't stupid. He keeps saying how many viewers they have because if you're a high school kid, you're going, oh, if I go to Colorado, people are going to see me. It's one thing to be on TV. It's another thing when people are watching the TV. And all these people that are just going off on Dion, it's just – none of them want to say the underlying factor is it because he's black, has a lot to do with it. You got a black guy coming in, and you got a black guy being black, wearing a chain, shades, <laughs> hyping his team up. But if you look – if you know Dion, you see how he's talking to these kids. He is – Totally, like, just feeding feeding their, like, souls, their egos, their self-esteem. He's making them believe in themselves, not just in football, but just in life. And that's and you got to be in a room with there's certain people, man. When you're in the room with them, you get it. You get it. There's a reason, like, Chappelle's who he is. Kevin Hart's who he is. Uh... Anybody that runs for president, whether you hate him or love him, whether you're in the room with Clinton, Barack, Trump, these presidents and people that I've known have met these presidents, been in the room with them, they're just like, dude, they suck you in. They suck. Well, that sounded bad with Clinton, but they just bring you right in and you feel like you're the only person in the room. You feel like your life matters. And some people just have that it factor. And Dion has that it factor. Dion comes into your room recruiting your son. Where do you think you're going? You're going to Colorado. Uh, and I, I don't know how long he's going to stay there. I Three years at least. But I, I'm i telling you, he, he'll either end up in the NFL or he'll end up just uh, going to one of the big, the big schools like in Alabama and Ohio State. And he's going to turn that around. He's, he's literally like a, like a black Nick Saban. Is what he's going to be in. He's turning like Jackson State. He turned them around. And now he's, oh, my God. I think it could be the greatest sports. If you go just sports person, dominated as a athlete. Now he's dominating as a coach. Uh, I just, I've never seen nothing like it. And, it, and for those people that say it's, it's ego-driven, they said the same thing when he played baseball. It was like, it's not fair. It's all about Dion. That's why he wants to play in the World Series, and he wants to play uh, on Sundays for the Falcons back then. But if you ask any of his teammates, that's not what it was about. He wanted to be their first team. So you can't have it both ways. You can't call a guy selfish and say he's feeding his ego. And by the way, all athletes have egos. All entertainers have egos. Anybody who's doing anything in front of the camera, and you reach the point where you're a pro, you have an ego. And it's how you deliver it. And how you perceive, how you project that. But trust, we all got egos. We're all competitive. Uh, I just, if you ask any of his teammates, anybody that really knows Dion, they all like him. And I, I like how he's calling the reporters out for talking bad about his team. He goes, all right, same energy. Come on now. Come on. I love it. Ah, I, It would be, can you imagine if they somehow go undefeated? I thought at the beginning of the year I was looking at their schedule and just – from what I took and what I saw the talent that they brought in, I thought six, seven games would have been a hugely successful season. Now, if they don't, I mean, I'd be shocked if they lose this week. They're going to be 3-0. and They're halfway there. And they got they got a tough schedule. But, man, can you, oh, can you imagine? Ugh. I get so pumped. But I get so upset that people just don't want to give I mean, the Lee, Lee Corso on college game day, I was like, he just kind of went in on them last week and I go what was that about and I just mm -mm -mm. guy's so good he's so good so it's funny too because like people get so emotionally invested in sports and I do too so you got you got the Dion thing right and then last week I say my quarterback Joe Burrow he comes the richest paid player in uh, NFL history the highest contract ever signed. And it's funny because you'll you'll read stuff on the internet and stuff, and you got people going, There's no he doesn't deserve that much. Uh tell me what he does that deserves that kind of money. I'm like, no, he deserves all the money. And it's funny, it's not even about like it's what they say. People doing better than you aren't upset at you. And the people that say he don't deserve that kind of money, I'm like, I'd be looking at them like, so you'd say no? 
if somebody offered you, was it 200 and whatever it was, 50 million, 85 million, 219 guaranteed, you're going to say no? Shut up. Shut up. We're so concerned. I've never watched a, a sporting event and they did something and I went, oh, he don't deserve that kind of money. What, you know, for, are there people always say this? So for 200 million, he needs to be out there. Uh, every play, both ways. I'm like, just shut up. Just I've never watched a game and thought about somebody's contract when they was playing. I don't care what sport it is. I just want to play. I can care less what they do off the field. I can care less what they make. I just want to play. And people are so concerned what other people are making. Oh, it's, it's, it, the internet's funny when people make these stupid comments. Man, if, I, if I made that kind of money, I'd do this. Yeah, but you don't because you suck. And you're never going to see that amount of money. Just by that comment alone lets me know you will never see that amount of money. Ever. And pl- it, you, When people make comments on the internet like they don't deserve that kind of money or whether you deserve that kind of money, that's all I need to know about that particular person. And I want nothing to do with them. I don't want to hang out because, one, you don't believe in yourself because you don't believe you can make that amount of money. I see someone making $250 million. I'd be like, well, how can I make $250 million? What can I do? That's what I, I was like, I can't play football. What else can I do to make that kind of money? I'd just be like, mm. I just think what would go through – I mean, I, I honestly, I'd be thinking when Joe Burrow signed that deal and I was like, God, what a feeling, what an awesome feeling to do something that you love, get paid that amount of money and sign that contract. And Burrow just in his, in his press conference, he was just like, yeah, I uh, probably can just buy something off of Amazon because everybody's like, well, what's, what are you going to do with your what's the first purchase? He goes, I don't know. I'm probably just going to Amazon and buy something that I like. I don't have to worry about what it costs anymore. I can just kind of get what I want on Amazon. I was just like, God, that guy's so cool. But I always think, what a great feeling to be 26 and doing something you love. You, 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 There's so few people in this world that get to actually do what they love for a living and get paid like that. There's so few. So how can you not be happy? How can you not be happy about that? You got to, people just are ugly, man. Ugh. So, other other thing I want to talk about off sports. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys saw this lady, Rhoda Osman. She got hit with a brick, allegedly. Uh, she went on Instagram and all the other social media outlets. And she was like, I got hit with a brick. This guy said I didn't get my phone number and nobody did anything. And you got all these dudes sitting around like, looking and she's going off on none of you did anything and you hear one guy goes what do you want us to do and come to find out she's lying about the whole thing like it ain't been confirmed she's lying she's lying she got hit with a brick there's no video of it nobody's been arrested there's no police report she started to go fund me and who gets hit with a brick and immediately pulls her phone out to film themselves I get hit with a brick <laughs> I'm not pulling my phone out to get mad at other people. I'm like, I got it. I'm, I'm going. I'm calling 911 with my phone. That's what I'm doing. If if I'm able to. Uh, never been hit with a brick. I don't know. But she she was swollen on this side of the face. So I don't know if it was. I don't know if she knew. There's oh there's some shady shit going on with this story. So they got her on video the night before where she's out wearing a ski mask where you only can see her eyes almost like something was already happening with her face. Why are you wearing a ski mask out of the club? And then the next day, now she's all swollen. Now she does this video, which as we know in today's society, there's cameras everywhere. If you're in a public place, there's cameras, whether you on a street and in a busy city. I'm like, I I mean, I, I believe it happened in Houston. If I'm not mistaken, let me see where this happened at. But she, then she starts a, a GoFundMe. And was it Houston or Austin? Uh, it, it doesn't matter where it happened. It was a busy city. It wasn't. It, it didn't happen in a field, cornfield. And uh, I'm always, I'm always very. These are why this is why GoFundMe sucks, because you're always so skeptical as where the money's going. Because I'll give you, I'll give you an example of where I felt a little. Not taken, but I, I turned my head on this GoFundMe one time. 
a buddy of mine passed away, and his family did a GoFundMe for the funeral. And I donated a lot to the GoFundMe because they had a goal, and they had to reach that goal. And it was, it was, you know, I ain't gonna say it was thousands of dollars away from the goal. So I end up donating the rest of the money to reach their goal. So the, the originally the funeral was ten thousand dollars, and then once they reached ten thousand dollars, the funeral was still a week away. It went up to fifteen. Then they reached that. It went up to twenty, and then went up. It went up to twenty-five, and I kept thinking, "What is going on here?" And then somebody made a comment like, "Yo, how much is this funeral?" <laughs> and then they went, took it back down to twenty, and I went, "Huh." So, yeah, do I think the money went to the funeral? Yeah, but I also think a lot of it went in somebody's pocket. Cause I was like, how you have a funeral for ten thousand? All of a sudden, it got up to twenty five thousand a week. I was like, so I'm, I don't regret donate money to the funeral because it was my buddy that passed away. But it was still like I looked at it sideways. Hmm, you know. And now this girl, this Rhoda Osman, she gets hit with a brick. She starts to go fund me, and then come to find out, three years earlier, she's got a video that's almost verbatim. The same. It's not a brick. It's just some guys harassed her, hit her, started GoFundMe three years ago. I was like, oh, this is the second time she's done this. So the first one didn't get, garner as much money. This one got her a lot more money. So now, now she's like taking her social media down. She's not commenting, but they've checked everything. They've checked police reports. There's nothing. There's no videos of this. There's witnesses after she was making that video. And like two guys that were in the video – they end up calling uh, 911 or they called the cops. And they said, we didn't see anything. We just did it because she said she got hit. And she's so just obnoxious with it and out of it. And I was like, even when I saw it, I go, she's, she's too like, I don't know how you would react, I guess. But it just didn't come across as authentic, even when I watched it the first time. And a lot of times I'll refrain from commenting on things because I've learned my lesson. Through the through the 10, 15 years of social media, I have learned my lesson not to jump the gun and comment on things. Because there was a couple friends of mine that ate this story up and went in about women getting abused, men not stepping up, watching it happen. And now we're coming to find out it was all a big scam. I mean, it ain't been official, but uh, yeah, I'm 90% sure. It's a big scam. Uh, let me see if they got any updates. Now there's, yeah. <laughs> and she's got a history of just drama. Like some people just drama follows, follows them. And she's got a history of this. But I saw the video from three years ago. I go, oh, it's the same energy. It's the same type of video. I don't know. I don't believe anything. I lied about being a barber. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I guess she came up with some fake witnesses. Yeah, it's and, it, and it's just when people do stuff like this, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's like because you got people out there that are like going through stuff, and that's why I'm so I'm so I'm always skeptical of giving to charities. Blanket charities, because I don't know where the money's going. I'll give to just a particular person and help them out if I know exactly where money's going. But when I people ask me to donate to charities, I'm like, well, where's the money really going? Because we hear too many stories of the money you donate is not going where you think it's going. So I'm always skeptical of that. But yeah, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, you know what? I think Roy Johnson... From BS High, he should start dating Rhoda Osman. They're both scammers. They both are bullshitters. So they both are loophole Leroy's. So why don't they just, they should get together. And they could just scam each other constantly. It's just funny. I don't know how this episode turned to a scamming episode. But it's funny. I was like, oh, I just put two and two together. Yeah, Rhoda and Roy. Why don't you guys get together? Uh, that's funny. I, I just realized how that went down. So, uh, 
anyways, that happens. And then um, I, I'm anxious to see how you guys feel about this. So the soccer, a soccer coach in Spain got suspended. Let me make, let me sh- make sure I got the uh, I got the country right because I saw it, and I, yeah, the Spanish Spanish soccer Spanish soccer player Jenny Hermosa uh, was kissed by Luis Ribeles. Ribeles was he the coach? He was a coach, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so Spain wins the World Cup in soccer, which is huge in Europe. It's like when the Super Bowl. And I don't think this guy has a, a track record of like like uh doing an inappropriate thing with women. Uh he wasn't the coach, he was the president, right? He's the president, yeah. President of the organization. And uh I don't it's it's so hard to tell. That that one I don't have an opinion on because I don't know. I've, I've, I'm looking at it and I saw it and he was just so excited and he grabbed her by the head and he kissed her on the lips, which I was like, Ooh, that was weird. But it didn't look like he didn't like stick his tongue down her throat. He didn't like touch her inappropriately, he grabbed her head. looks like they were talking and he just, sometimes you can get caught up in the emotion. So that, I mean, that's what it looked like to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know their history, but like, all I know is I've been in sports, being in uh, – and only sports do things that, that make you do things out of your mind. I've – man, I've, I've been at games and hugged people I would have never hugged, been kissed on the cheek by men like, oh. I thought it, <laughs> I, I, you know, you just get caught up in, in these, these – ah, the emotion of sports. So, uh, I, I mean, you know, Shaq has a history of kissing me on my head. Shaq will grab me just and just start laughing. I'm like, and you just kiss me on my head. So when I saw it, I didn't think, but then, man, it's just, it gets drawn. It just gets blown out bigger than it has to be. The, he should just, if there's no history of, of inappropriate behavior with this guy, the apology should go to her, to girl, if she was uncomfortable with the kiss, and she should be able to tell him, I, I didn't like that. And if it's never happened before, and you're caught up in all the emotion, I don't think there should be, like, disciplinary action for that guy. I think we're getting too caught up in – there's there's no PTSD from this. It's in the big scheme of things. It's not a huge deal. We just make it out to be – people just want to be mad, and they find something like, he kissed her on her lips, and it wasn't consensual. I was like, you got to look at the circumstances. They just won the World Cup, which is like the Super Bowl. And uh, this guy's dedicated his whole life to soccer. He's probably dreamed of this day. It happens. And he's just like, oh. And then the funny part was, really watch the video. He kisses her on the cheek, and then he smacks her. But he don't smack her on the butt. Smacks her in the back. Like, all right. I think if he really was trying to do something like that, he would have smacked her on the butt to get a cheap feel. He doesn't. Wah. And then bam. And if it made her uncomfortable, she, she should voice her opinion. I didn't like that. And then... He'll apologize, and then you just sit down, you move on. I'm so sorry, I got caught up in the emotion of everything. I'm just ah, oh. so I don't think disciplinary action. I think we're just in a society right now where everybody just wants to be mad and they want to. I don't like how one action like this, people want to end people's careers. It's okay to have some disciplinary action, but not you don't try to end somebody who has a. A lifelong history of being a decent human being, and then you get caught up in the emotion of one thing, and you just want to end them. That's the no. Oh, that should just. I don't know why we're like this. I don't know why people are like this. Let me see if I don't think he uh, has ever done anything inappropriate in the past. Let me just make sure. I'm not speaking out of tune. Allison Spanish soccer president responds to World Cup kiss backless says it was not sexual. It definitely wasn't sexual at all. You can see it. It was just caught up in the emotion. Uh, they wanted to be all these people want to be punished. Immediate disciplinary action. <sighs> yeah. Uh, why? 
about the kiss social media. The Federation shared a statement attributed to Morrison that described the kiss as a mutual gesture, explaining it was totally spontaneous and prompted by the huge joy of winning the World Cup. I, that's what I think it was. Uh, in, in especially in that that culture, I don't know if that's normal or not. I don't know. Uh, she didn't like the kiss was reported. The kiss received so bad in Spain, including criticism. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but man. Talk about a talk about a buzz kill. Your country finally wins the World Cup, and that's what you want to focus on. Uh, well, I didn't think it was. I think it just got blown out of proportion completely. Uh, but that kid, he said the kiss was consensual. Now I don't think he should say that because you didn't have time to ask. He doesn't was going to be like, I'm going to kiss you right now. I'm going to kiss you right now. He should have said that. Said that, and Hermosa said she didn't give her permission and felt violated. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know why he said that. He should have said that it wasn't wasn't consensual. I just I got caught up in the emotion and I just boom. But it clearly was any wasn't anything sexual. You can see why he did it. He was just caught up in the the happiness of everything. I'm telling you, when your team wins, you be kissing people. I don't know who I'm gonna kiss if the Bengals win the Super Bowl, but don't come near me. I'm hugging and kissing a lot of people. I'll tell you that. So, I, if you just stay away from me, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna be tonguing nobody down. But oh, I'm gonna be kissing a lot of people. Trust. If you were for the Bengals, we we gonna be kissing. I mean, it'll be a cheek or something like that. <laughs> you, you know, fellas, we have each other headlocks. <laughs> so, you might see me on this. Uh, me on the uh, the blogs. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I thought that was blowing out of proportion, but I just, people just want to stay where everybody just wants to be mad. We just want to end people. I'm just like this. I just didn't agree with it. So that's it. So anyways, uh, yeah, so this weekend I am in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like I said, we just added a 930 show Sunday. I think we're going to add one Saturday. Next week I'm in D.C. We just added three shows at the Improv in D.C. And then I'm at Richmond, Virginia, the Funny Bone, and I'm at the Morongo Casino. October. I'm in Cancun, October sixth for the big. It's a big hip hop comedy fest, but that's already sold out. So we we they the promoter got the whole resort and it's packed. So uh, October seventh, Morongo, and then then I hit Cleveland, 11, 12, 13, and fourteenth. So Miles Garrett, if you're there, come out and uh, I don't know. I'll, no, no, don't. You you've already hurt me enough this year. So. And it, by the way, did anybody see the Miles Garrett when he was like doing the basketball thing? He was going, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then he just rushed the line. I was like, this dude's out there just playing Sandlot football. He's such a freak of nature. He's so good. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's all I got. This is Gary on with the Get Some Podcast.